What is reusable coding in Python? In today's video, we are going to be learning all about reusable code and how you can make coding fun and easy. This is part 19 in the Coding for Kids in Python video series. Today, I'm going to be going over the entire chapter seven of the book, Coding for Kids in Python, written by Mrs. Eiji and Take. In my next video in this series, we are going to be doing the fun activities of chapter seven. This is Neha, and welcome back to NP Station. Now for the fun fact for today's video. In 2015, there was a survey conducted where 75% of students in the UK said they would rather learn how to code a robot rather than learn the foreign language, which is French. Now I know that this was back in 2015, but the importance of Python as the preferred programming language has grown in present times as well, with many big IT companies adopting Python for their technological advancements. Welcome back to part 19 in Coding for Kids in Python. Today, we will learn what reusable code is and how it makes it easy for you to code in Python. Hello everyone and welcome back to NP Station. So the full of chapter seven, which is what I'm going to be going over in today's video is all about reusable code. So we write code that can do repetitive, complex, or time consuming things for us. But if we had to write it every single time we needed to use it, coding wouldn't be very useful, right? Well, functions and modules provide, us, provide a way for us to write code that's reusable. If you think about it, we've already used so many in this series. We've used the print function since chapter one. The first line of code that we wrote together in this series was print hi python, and that was in the first video. And we've just learned about how fun and interactive the multipurpose turtle module, module is in chapter six. Now, most programs are made up of one or many modules, and each of those modules is usually made up of several functions. So let's see how writing code in this way helps us have smarter programs. And guess what? Today, we're actually not um, going to be starting off with the idle. We're going to be using Google Collab again. So go ahead and write Google Collab. We're going to open a new notebook. So here, go ahead and write or uh, click on the button called New Notebook, and it will open a fresh, clean notebook for us, ready to have code in there. So as we've learned, functions are reusable blocks of code that can do something um, specific or return a value. Usually, when we write functions for things that we often, you know, repeat. So let's say we needed to greet a person every time they used our game. We could write a print function every single time we needed to greet them. So let's say maybe like we have this game and three people log in at the same time. What we would do is write three different print functions, right? So hello person. That would be our phrase that we're going to say to the person or the user. So we would actually write this three times since there are three people who logged in. So if you run this code, we will get the following output. Um, and it will say hello person three times. Or we can move this action of greeting a person into a function. Go ahead and click on the add, block, add code block and here write def greet and then open um, parentheses and add a colon. Oops, there we go. And here write our print function, which is print open parentheses, hello, and then comma person. Add an exclamation mark and don't forget to close the double quotes and the parentheses. So now what we're going to do um, is we need to call this function, right? So we can use it, now use this function anytime by writing code like this. Greet, empty parentheses. So if you run this code, we will get hello person. Pretty cool, right? So here's what's happening. To create a function, we first need to describe what it will be called and what it will do. So we start by using the def keyword, as you can see, which is right there, which signals to the computer that we are writing a function. And def is actually short for define. Just like a dictionary defines what a word means, we define what our function will do when we use the def keyword. Next, we add our function. 
because it will be a greeting, but no, sorry, because we will be greeting people when we use this function, the name greet is a very good choice as it clearly describes what our function is doing. We then add some parentheses to our function name. We may add parameters in the parentheses later, but for now, we don't have any. Lastly, a colon shows that the following indented lines of code will be part of our function. As you can see, the print function is part of the greet function. And that's it. An important thing to know about functions is that they don't run on their own. This means that whenever a computer cro comes across one, it automatically skips the code within it. Now, in order to actually use a function, it needs to be called, meaning we must clearly tell the computer to start executing the called function's code. If we don't call the functions, then the code within them will never be run. Now, as you can see, you may be wondering, well, how do you run a function? Well, you just did it right here in this code greet parentheses, that's how you call a function. Or basically, um, what you would do is whatever your function name is called, you would just write that, the word, and then two empty parentheses, and when you click run, you will get your output. Now let's talk about parameters. Well, our greet function is pretty normal, right? We say hello person whenever we call it. But what if we wanted to greet the person by their name instead of the word person? That would be a much nicer greeting, wouldn't it? So parameters are just the thing we need to add to our function in order to do this. A parameter is a piece of input data, right? That we give to a function to do something. A function can have no parameters, just like our original greet function, or it can have one or more parameters. When we create functions that use parameters, we say that these functions accept parameters, which lets us know that the function can take pieces of input data. So to make our greet function a little nicer, let's have it accept one parameter called name and then use it in our greeting. We add a parameter to a function by placing it in between the parentheses, which is right here, you know, that come after the function name. So what I'm going to do first is just delete this, that line of uh, block of code where we called the function. So we're going to add our name parameter right here in those parentheses just like that, and the rest is going to stay the same. Now by adding this um, parameter to our function, we are now able to use it within our function. This means we can do something like this. Go ahead and go to your print function. Here, we're actually going to add an F string. So F, and then you have the quotation, hello, comma, but instead of person, we're going to delete that and add our curly brackets and write the word name. And the rest is going to stay the same. Now, when we call our greet function, it will use the parameter you pass into it. Add the co another code block, and here, write greet, and in parentheses, go ahead and write your name. I'm going to write Neha, and this will result into this output. Hello, Neha. Pretty cool, right? Now, you know what, though? We can actually make our greet function even cooler. Let's decide that we not only want to greet someone by their name, but that we also want to change your greeting depending on the person. We might say, what's up, Neha? Nice to see you again, if we're greeting someone we know very well. Or we could say, um, hello, Cameron. Nice to meet you, if it's someone new. Remember, code is all about reusability. So we're already ahead of the game by putting our greeting into a function. We just have to change it a little bit to do these other things we mentioned. So to start, let's add another parameter to our greet function. We'll add a parameter called is underscore new, which can tell the function whether the person we are greeting is someone we know. Again, go ahead and delete that um, previous code block and let's add another parameter. Go to the name parameter, add a comma, and write our new one, which is is underscore new. And the rest is going to stay the same. Now, we just need to add some logic to our function. Remember, we want to print a different greeting for the people we know than the one we print for the people we don't know. In this case, we can use our newly added is underscore new parameter to help us make this decision. So if we don't know the person, we can use a specific greeting. So go ahead and delete this print function. And instead of our print function, we're just going to write a if statement. So write if open parentheses and write your parameter is underscore new. Here add 
a colon, and it will indent the next line. Here, let's add an, a new print function. So print, open parentheses, F, so we're using an F string, and open the double quotes. Hello, comma, and then curly brackets name, which is our parameter. And we're going to have two sentences here. So add an exclamation mark. And here we're going to write, nice to meet you. There we go. Don't forget to close the quotation and parentheses. Otherwise, we're just going to use the friendlier greeting. So to do that, we're going to just add or click enter, click back backspace here in the same indentation line as the previous if statement. Here, write the word else and colon. And now what you're going to do is write another print function. Print F quotation. Um, how about what's up? Yeah, so what's up? And then how about we add our name parameter right here? And then what we're going to do is write nice to meet you or nice to see you again because we want a new one. So that's all. Make sure to close your quotation and your parentheses at the end. And that's it. Now when we use our greet function, we just need to pass in a few inputs for the parameters and it can do the rest of the work for us. Using the parameters we pass in, the computer can decide which greeting to use. We can also call, call our greet function as many times as we want and it will print out a greeting every time. So go ahead and add another code block. Here, I'm going to write greet, open your parentheses, and write your name in quotation or in double quotes and add a comma. Here I'm going to go ahead and write the word false. So I'm going to go ahead and run this code and as you can see it prints out what's up Neha nice to see you again. So let me explain this code that I just wrote. As you see, I've, I'm calling my function, call, and I have greet, which is the function name, and in parentheses, I have my name, which is um, what it's going to, this Neha is what it's going to be writing in the parentheses, the curly brackets right here. It's just going to substitute Neha there. And then we have our comma, and another parameter I've written here is the word false. By writing false, I am telling the computer that the computer already knows me. Okay, so that's why it says, nice to see you again. Let's try out another um, greeting or another person, another name. Let's write our function name, open parentheses. And how about, I don't know, uh, Jackie. It's a random name. And then I'm going to write the word true. Well, what happens here? Well, if we run it, it will say, hello, Jackie, nice to meet you. By writing the word true, I'm telling the computer that this um, girl named Jackie, um, the computer doesn't know her, so it's going to say nice to meet you. And can you imagine having to write an if statement and print a different F string each time you needed to do this greeting? Well, functions make it much easier and smarter to do actions like this in code. So as we've seen, functions are great for actions we need to repeat. We can use them to do something for us once or 100 times, depending on how many times we need it. Functions are also good at helping us perform calculations or make some changes to data before we can continue using it in our code. These, functions of, um, these kinds of functions usually have return values, which is the resulting output a function gives us back after calling it. We've already used many functions that return some data to us throughout this book or the series, right? If you look back to the turtle module, we use the X core and Y core functions. Do you remember what return values they gave back? Well, when called, these functions return the current X coordinate and the current Y coordinate of our turtle. How about the range function? When we talked about loops, we used the range function to iterate the specific ranges of numbers. Well, this function accepted a starting and a stopping index, which were our input parameters. The range function then takes these parameters and creates a list of all the numbers that are between um, these starting and stopping indices. This newly created list of numbers is then returned to us, which is our return value or the output. And we can, so we can iterate through it in the loop we originally called it in. Let me give a few examples. So the first one would be range and in parentheses stop. 
So the parameters that are accepted here, or the input, would be the stopping index. An example is range, and in parentheses, 5. 5 would be the stopping index. So the return value would be a list of numbers from 0 to the stopping index, which is 5. And another one is range, parentheses, start, comma, stop. Here the parameters accepted are the starting index and the stopping index. An example could be range, parentheses, 1, comma, 10. So the return value here would be a list of numbers from 1 to 10. Now, another one, which I want you guys to figure out on your own. What would the output be? If I put range, parentheses, start, comma, stop, comma, step, what happens here? Well, the, let's figure this out step by step. So the parameters accepted would be the starting index, the stopping index, and the step. An example is range, parentheses, 1, comma, 100, comma, 5. So the output would actually be a list of numbers from 1, which is our starting index, to 100, which is our stopping index. But it would be by step amount, which is 5. So it's going to be counting by 5s from 1 to 100. Now calling a function is definitely very easy. Whenever there's a point in your code that you need to use a function, simply just call it by writing the name followed by parentheses, which we already did, greet parentheses. And that's it. This is the way we call functions that are in the same file. So that is actually it for um, part 19 in the Coding for Kids in Python video series. I definitely had a lot of fun learning more about reusable codes. I hope you all did as well. And um, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And we're almost at 9,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for that. If you have any questions, please do feel free to reach out to me in my social media handles, which are Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can just reach out to NP Station. 2018 but that's all for today's video have a great day everyone um, next video in the series we'll be doing the fun activities of chapter 7 so stay tuned on NP station but see you all later bye